Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in the programme, as climate change makes extreme weather events more likely, we report from a German town devastated by the floods in July. It was simply inconceivable. It was also not conceivable for science. It was not conceivable for the forecasters. It was unthinkable. But first, the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Let's start by looking at the North Pole region, as September is the month when Arctic sea ice hits its lowest level after the summer. It was a mixed picture. Here we can see highlighted in red the Greenland Sea, where there was a record minimum amount of sea ice last month. But then to the north of Alaska, they actually hit a 15-year high. Overall, though, we're still on a downward trend for the entire Arctic region, with 8% less sea ice than average in September. Now, let's have a look at temperature anomalies for last month. It was one of the four warmest Septembers on record globally, with temperatures 0.4 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average. It was warmer than average across much of Canada and the United States, and here in Latin America, where they're experiencing a sustained drought. It was also warmer than average in Western Africa, Central Asia and parts of China. And then if we switch over to Europe, you can see the continent was basically divided in two from east to west. The UK experienced its second warmest September on record, but because it was relatively chilly in Eastern Europe, the continent as a whole was 0.2 degrees below average last month. Now to our report, looking at the role of climate change in the deadly floods that claimed over 220 lives in Germany and Belgium in July. Global warming means that such extreme rainfall events will become more intense and more frequent. I went to the town of Altenaar in Germany to see how they're facing up to this new reality. Broken bridges and ruined houses. Here in Altenaar, the cleanup continues and the question of how to rebuild hangs in the air. On the 14th of July, this entire region of Europe was hit by exceptionally heavy rain, falling on already saturated ground. Mayor Cornelia Weigand witnessed the floods. There was a house next to that tree that completely collapsed in the floods. And where unfortunately, the people who were in the house also died. And here you can slowly start to understand what the flood actually did to us. The heavy rain was forecast and flood alerts were issued. However, the water rose far higher than anyone predicted, up to 10 metres in places. This river actually floods quite frequently and floods of two or three metres are something that most people here would expect to see over the course of their lives. But what happened this July was totally unthinkable. The flood water on this building went past the ground floor and halfway up the second floor. Lots of factors led to the disaster. The wet spring meant the rain just ran off the landscape, dragging debris with it. However, climate change has a role too. Such intense rain events are now up to nine times more likely in Western Europe as a result of global warming. Expert Tobias Fuchs explains. The warmer it is, the more water the air can absorb. About one degree warmer air can hold about 7% more water vapour. And what is in the atmosphere sooner or later comes down again as precipitation. And if we then have very slow-moving low-pressure areas, flash floods like the one we experienced here in mid-July can build up within a short time. So how should they rebuild? Mayor Weigand says she'd like her town to become an example of flood resilience in a changing climate. It would make sense to see this as a model region. How can we achieve better flood protection for such valleys? How do we cope with the water volumes and how can we then build in such river valleys so that all the development becomes more resistant to such storm surges? You can hear more from those experts and see all the data presented in this programme on our website, euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.